Hey, what's up guys? Mirai here with a video that's a little different than the normal tutorial or how-to that I uh, typically release. If you haven't been following me since my much, much earlier videos that were on a different channel, then this one is going to need a bit of a history recap. So about two and a half years ago, I decided to test my computer hardware and see how many accounts I could successfully multibox at one time on a single machine. Not for actual gameplay, just to see how many clients I could do, how many clients would be possible on that hardware. I initially started out testing 30 accounts and was able to make that happen, to which I celebrated by doing a fun and exciting follow train right outside of Ogremar. Now, there wasn't a lot of action going on outside of the city during that test, so I wanted to take it into the city to see how the computer would react when more players were present. From the initial test, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to run all 30 in the city itself because I was, I was already running out, uh, running out of RAM outside of the city. I only had a measly 16 gigabytes on that machine at that time. So I dropped it to 20 accounts instead, and I successfully brought them all into Ogremar without any real issues at all. I did two laps in the Valley of Honor using a celebratory follow train, but again, at that time, I would not have recommended that people actually try to play uh, try to run that many accounts at the same time on a single machine and actually expect a decent gameplay. Now, all of these tests uh, up to this point were done using an Intel 2600K with a mild overclock, two GTX 583 gigabyte GPUs, 16 gigabytes of RAM, as I previously said, and all the game clients were running from an SSD. I'll also put the links to the old videos in the description in case anyone wants to see them, I guess. So fast forward to today, Within the last few months, I recently upgraded my hardware and naturally it was time to do another stress test. Only this time, I knew I could run more than 30. Obviously, the next logical step up would be 40 and I did it. I did it with relative ease. Now, I did record and actually prepare a video for the public showing 40 accounts before I decided to just toss it out and up the ante. Now, you might be saying, what? Up the ante, dude, how many accounts do you expect to run on a single machine? Well, I have access to 60 trial accounts, so I figured I would just throw everything at this machine to see if I could get it to burst into flames. From the 40 boxing test, I felt that I had enough processing power at my disposal to make this happen, but I wanted to switch up my window layout for this next test. I currently have three GTX 780 Ti GPUs and they were an SLI when I was doing the 40 boxing test. But I knew that if I wanted to run more, it'd be safer if I disabled SLI and then assigned specific sets of game clients to specific GPUs in order to get the most out of them. You may have heard of this before being referred to as splitting the load, where you split the load of the game clients across multiple GPUs. So here's the window layout I used, and you can see how everything is broken up. And, and just for the record, for those of you who might be watching this and aren't familiar with how IS Boxer and Inner Space work, even the smaller regions are being rendered at the same size as the larger regions. They're just being scaled down, but the resolution and the load that's being put on the system is the same. Now, unfortunately, I felt it was likely that I was going to run out of available CPU, especially with so many clients fighting over only a set amount of threads. So I dropped the resolution from 1080 to 720 for this run. I've used uh, 1080 on every single stress test prior to this, but this time around I wanted to play it safe because I really wasn't sure what was going to happen. So to be fancy this time, I got a screen cap of this rather than just record one single game client like I had in the past, but not only did I screen cap a single monitor, I went ahead and recorded them all. So I'm recording across all three monitors at 5760 by 1080 so that I can show everything or anything that I need to. Now there's a bit of a performance hit because of this, but I, I felt that it was acceptable enough in order to bring a better quality video. And if for some reason someone still thinks this is video trickery, here's a quick shot from an external camera. Now either my machine doesn't like sending 60 login requests at the same time, or Blizzard servers don't like accepting 60 login requests at the same time because it was impossible for me to ever log all of them in at the same time. I had to create a special set of mapped keys in IS Boxer so that I could log in 20 at a time. 
And before anyone shouts, private server, dude, I'm going to stop you right there because here's the Blizzard server list. It just so happened to work out that this these two clients fell into the server list rather than the character selection screen. And I conducted this on the North American realm, Stormrage. Now, here's an example of what I was dealing with when running so many clients. I tried to run the background clients at 10 frames per second, but after logging in 40 accounts, I was getting hit pretty hard, and I would have never been able to run all 59 uh, clients, slave clients in the background at 10 frames per second. So I, I adjusted the background FPS of the clients, and when I go to export here, it takes a full 10 seconds to complete. I mean, this is something that should be should be instant when you export from IS Boxer. And then I have to deal with 60 clients refreshing themselves all at once. It might not look so bad watching it on video, but it definitely felt like my system was going to crash whenever I had to do this. Uh, fortunately enough, it never did. So I, I guess if you really want to test your system stability, you know, just fire up 60 clients, jump in game, and uh, start multiboxing. Now, once I had all the clients in game, I figured there was, there was really no better way to show them off than with a super long and ever so exciting follow train all throughout Iron Forge. I kicked it off at the edge of the Forlorn Cavern because that area is kind of difficult to navigate through, so I thought I'd try to make it through the rest of Iron Forge first. I've sped this part of the video up a little bit because contrary to what I, I just said, follow trains really aren't all that exciting to watch. So by now you've probably noticed that there's this green overlay of information that shows what my hardware is doing. Someone's bound to ask, so the overlay is being provided by Riva Tuner, which is being fed information from both MSI Afterburner and a program called Hardware Info. I have this here so that I can monitor what exactly is going on with everything without the need for several programs running on top of my game clients. Now the main client is using the high preset with 2x MSAA. The rest of the clients are set to the lowest they can go with no anti-aliasing at all. And every client is running at 1280 by 720. All the clients are using DX9 and that's for two reasons. One, DX11 requires much more power to run. And two, there's currently a bug in the game client that doesn't allow you to use DX11 on a monitor that isn't either assigned as the primary in Microsoft Windows or attached to your primary GPU. I know that sounds a little confusing, but the bug's been around since Blizzard introduced DX11 to World of Warcraft back at the beginning of Cataclysm. I even tested it again before doing this run, and it's still there. Anyway, if you've ever operated such a large follow train before, you'll know that you need to take these super wide turns like you're seeing me do in this video. A train like this is is kind of tricky with such a large amount of characters because when you make a turn with your leader, you need to account for where the 20th or 40th or 60th character is going to be by the time they reach that same spot. Because as you know, or as you should know, follow isn't an exact path. You know, every character cuts every turn a little tighter each time, which ends up skewing the path. And if you're not accounting for that with your lead character, your train is going to get hung up on something sooner than later. And trust me, as open as it looks, there's plenty of crap to get hung up on in Ironforge. I can't tell you how many times I kept getting stuck on things in this stupid city. So the follow train is still chugging along here, but we're coming up to the dreaded Forlorn Cavern for a full lap. And unfortunately, one of my characters did end up getting stuck on something. What's a little frustrating about it is that they got caught on an invisible texture on the floor between the Mystic Ward and the Forlorn Cavern there. But I was pretty happy overall that I made it this far because I had tried doing this numerous times before and the train kept breaking much earlier on. After the big train, I did do a smaller train in the Mystic Ward where my leader ended up catching up to the back of the train and I decided to just auto-complete the loop, if you will. So now they'll just keep going around in circles automatically. But because the follow path slowly closes in on itself, they will eventually stop or get caught on something. If you do notice, the train is actually a bit messed up because I somehow lost a character that went off into the corner on their own. This would happen from time to time for no apparent reason, where one character would just randomly run off and kind of screw things up. I had no idea why it was happening, but I really wasn't too worried uh, about it, and I didn't care enough to troubleshoot it. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are, are wondering, what the hell was the point of this? Why would you do something like this? And there's not really any point at all. 
I mean, does there have to be a point? I'm definitely not trying to make a point by doing this. I just wanted to see if I could do it. I mean, why not? I had 60 trial accounts at my disposal and I just like to tinker around with these things and push the limits of my hardware when I see fit. It also kind of sets the stage for maybe some upcoming videos that I'd like to create though. Who knows, you know, I could have stumbled upon an, an awesome trick to help increase performance when running a massive amount of clients. Unfortunately, I didn't, but I could have. You know, the greatest discoveries are usually made or, or discovered by accident. Anyway, that's it. If, uh, if anyone's interested in knowing more about the hardware I'm using or my computer setup, uh, there are some links in the description. As always, thanks for watching my ridiculous videos.